Welcome to the Jason E. Jones Show, a patriotic sports show. And now, here's the show. It is time for the Jason E. Jones Show, wherever you are, whenever you are, whoever you are. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Today we have, obviously, another special guest, Coach Damon Floyd, Bradley Central. Is it Bears or Golden Bears? Just the Bears. Just the Bears. I yep. like I like the Golden Bears. Yeah. Uh, well, we're just Bears. We're so just... I don't know how to answer that one other than we're just the Bears. By the way, I saw a baby uh, grizzly last night in around the area of Little Bighorn. And if you see a baby grizzly, take a moment, realize what you're doing, and understand there's probably mamas somewhere around. Yeah, you know, we, we don't have grizzlies around here, but we'll see a black bear every now and then. So that's, yeah. that's usually the case, too. Their mom will be close. Yeah, in uh, Montana, 15,000. The only, the only state that has more grizzlies is Alaska. So fifteen over 15,000 wild grizzlies, and they're, they're interesting. Okay, Coach, so I am outside of the little bighorn area where Custer had his last stand. Let's talk... Let's talk uh, Bradley Central football. I won't keep you on forever. I know you got a lot of stuff going on. It's game week. So we talked last year. Kind of give me an idea. How's the team looking this year? Uh, what are you What are you feeling? Are you Are you senior led? Junior led? Yeah, yeah. We got um, a lot of seniors with a lot of experience. Uh, uh, we've had, let's see, we, this senior class has eight guys. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, eight guys that started as freshmen. Okay. Um, six of them that have been with us for four years. Then we had two guys transfer in mm-hmm. um, that, you know, are Division One commits. One, Our quarterback, Caleb Martin, is committed to Miami, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And then Boo Carter is wide receiver defensive back. He's committed to University of Tennessee. So we have a total of eight guys that have started since freshmen. So, uh, have a lot of experience, and and uh, the guys that did start as freshmen, most of them have started, you know, at least last year. So, right. Um, we actually have another freshman starting for us now. It's a defensive lineman, but um, a lot of very experienced team uh, so far. The first two games, we've been pretty explosive on offense, and defense has held their own for the most part. But uh, you know, this Friday we play Maryville, and it's going to be a little different ta- talent level than the first two games. The first two games, we were just quite honestly more talented than those two teams and, yeah. you know, should have won. So yeah. uh, this week will be a huge challenge for us. Now, in the history of, of Maryville and what a, what, a, uh, what a program they've got going on there, what what kind of success have you had against Maryville? Uh, none. <laughs> I think uh, well, I've, since I've been the head coach, we've never won. Okay. Um, now you're talking about a team, you know, that's, let's see, I think they've won 
13 state championships in the last 20 years yeah. and then four other years they went to the semifinals yeah. um so yeah actually maybe every year they went to semifinals they didn't win state championships so a very successful team they're a uh, region opponent um so you know if you get over the hump with them then you're you're probably playing in the state championship and unfortunately we've not been able to do that that's that's a that's a task that little by little, hopefully the Bears can can build up to and take that next step. Well, that's the goal, you know. But it's been a lot of people's goal yeah. playing Maryville, and, and uh, you know, there's been numerous times that we've both been. Well, of course, Maryville's been ranked high every year, but we've been ranked in the top ten, and and uh, we thought we've had a chance, and yeah. we've had some close games with them, and then. Uh, we've had some where they just blow us out. So yeah. it's a very disciplined program. They've obviously had a lot of talent come through there. Uh, the biggest thing is, man, they, I think that they trust each other. In other words, their teammates trust each other. They, yeah. the, the, the players trust the coaches when they call something. The players believe it's going to be successful. So yeah. in turn, the players believe they're supposed to win. And I yeah. think that's a huge uh, huge advantage on playing on a program like that. But like I mentioned before, they do have talent as well. Didn't you host them a few years ago, maybe around the COVID years in the playoffs? Not in the playoffs. Okay. Uh, every time we played in the playoffs has been at their place. Okay, uh, I don't know what I was thinking there. Well, there was a year we were supposed to play them here, but we ended up getting beat in the second round. Okay. Uh, but the playoffs would have had to come through here. But uh, Okay. Well, actually, they, we, may not have, we may not have been in the same classification that year, actually. Right. Uh, that was years ago. So, no, we've always played them at Maribel in the playoffs. Well, I mean, I've lived in that area. I've lived in a lot of places. I've I was I worked at the Bradley County Sheriff's Department after I got out of the the National Guard, and I got to see how how big football is and how how much talent is in in Bradley County with with Cleveland High School now Walker Valley and and Bradley Central. With that being said, it when you when you Get that many schools. I, I know I did this with Heath Shuler the other day. What what could have been? It, imagine now with how much talent is in Tennessee. We've never seen that much talent. If it was two schools instead of three schools, you you probably already you might have already been over that hump with Maribel. But that's that's kind of yeah. I mean Walker Valley's had a you know they've had a lot of talent come through there. They've had some yeah uh, Division one players and that have went on to have great success at college. So I think it definitely, you know, hurts your depth. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, unfortunately that's not the case and yeah. you can't make excuses. And, I got you. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. So we'll yeah. line up who we got and go play and yeah. get the best, we, the best we can. Well, you're definitely respected. I, I've talked to a lot of coaches in the area. I got to talk to Coach Rankin last year trying to get him back on again and, uh, you're definitely a respected coach, and you do things the right way. So that's 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 really great to, when your constituents talk about you. Yeah, yeah, it means a lot, especially you know, if Gary Rankin said something nice about you, then <laughs> it makes you feel good. So you know, we we try to do things the right way. I believe in the long run, that's that's it's going to you know, you reap what you sow is what we tell our team all the time. And, um, you know, you just try to do things the right way, and it's probably from the the way I was raised and the coaches that yeah. I've been coached by, I believe there's one way to do it. Like I mentioned, the right way. We have two team rules on our on our team. It's yes, sir, no, sir, and yeah. the second one, do the right thing. So our kids know the difference between right and wrong. We all do. Sometimes yeah. we just don't choose to do the right thing, and there's consequences to that. And we try to hold them accountable and make a mistake, you pay for it. Now, I lived in Harrison, which is just – over that little mountain right there to Cleveland and Bradley Central. Even though the area has blown up, it's still uh, – you still have a lot of country out there going towards um, – oh, uh, going towards Meigs County, going towards, towards like, Ray County and all that. So even though it has blown up as far as population, it still, it still feels a little bit like country out there. Uh, yeah, it's definitely changing. It's – yeah. I live four miles away from the school, and if I leave here at a certain time during the day, and I'm not exaggerating, it'll take me 20, 25 minutes to get home Wow! just from traffic. So yeah. it's, uh, it's it's definitely changed a it's lot changed over the last lot, yeah. 20 years, yeah. So yeah. Um, uh, still a lot of country because we have a lot of uh, 
lot of areas that haven't been developed yet. Yeah. But, um, in the city, man, it's 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 pretty packed. Yeah, that Chattanooga, uh, Cleveland area right there. Wow, it's I, I mean, it, in the last twenty years, like a lot of places, it is just it is just blown up as far as population. Well, it's a great place to live, um, and I, I think obviously a lot of people are figuring that out. But yeah, um, even though it's got a little bit more crowded, we we love it here. Well, you got Polk County just down the road, and 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 the rivers and the mountains. I mean, you're probably looking at one of the most overall just a gorgeous place. Yeah, the man, you can see the mountains from about anywhere, and yeah, uh, you know, in Polk County, it's it's a nice place to go up on Lake Okoye, and mm-hmm. and uh, so yeah, a lot of things to do, and um, it's God's country. Yes, sir. And with that being said, kind of, I'm not going to keep you too long here let you get to what you get obviously it's game week and and it's marvel the fact that you took time i I, it's a blessing i appreciate that uh before we we let you go a couple more things uh building a uh, i call it a garden because that's what it is your your youth football all the way up to the top do you find that being involved in that to some degree trying to trying to obviously coaches are going to do what they what they kind of feel like and hopefully they stay somewhat around just building fundamentals do you find that having a little bit of 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 a say or a little bit of an influence on the younger the younger leagues in in bradley county and cleveland that 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 helps with success of a program I don't think there's any doubt, you know, and, and we've benefited from kids playing in our Bradley Youth League. Sterling Collins runs ours, and he does an incredible job. Um, but I think the biggest thing is those kids playing together and growing up together. Yeah. And then by the time they get to high school, you know, hopefully they want to play for Bradley. And and uh, But it means that there's so much team bonding that happens over those years and continuity. Um, obviously you want them to have success, but like you said, the most important thing is fundamentals, having fun and building that brotherhood. Mm -hmm. And by the time they get to us, you know, they're trusting each other. They care for each other. And that's such a huge aspect in team sports, especially in football, because you, you know, our main core value is trust. Mm -hmm. If we don't have trust, we can't take care of discipline. We can't take care of any, like they don't believe us, you know? So we talk about trusting each other a lot. And when they play youth league all the way up, they trust each other by the time they get here, and I think that's that's invaluable. Yeah. Have you have? Is it Sterling? Is that what you said, Sterling? Yes. Okay. Have you with Sterling? Have so you run in high school? Are you are you running the are you running the spread with the RPO? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Pretty much have to these days. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. So how do you how do you instill that it it a Obviously, the earlier leagues is about fundamentals, about how to line up, how to how to block, how to how to tackle, how to catch the ball, the ball. And you, people would say, "Well, that should be just something understood." You watch a lot of programs; apparently, it's not. So, yeah. But uh, how? Where do you start kind of influencing the uh, spread offense and the RPO? Is that in the middle school systems? Um. Well, yeah, I don't say anything to the coaches at the middle school or the yeah. the, the the youth league because um, number one, we like we said, fundamentals first. They yeah. need to have fun. Gotcha. Um, but they need to try to win. Yeah. And, you know, they're with their you. team every day. I can't tell them what they you. need to do to be successful. And yeah. So for us, really, we just start you know implementing our system as freshmen. So we mm-hmm. keep our freshmen with the varsity, so they're gotcha. not separated. So okay, okay, you know. Hopefully, you don't have a lot of freshmen playing on varsity football anyway because you're talented. But Right. Um, yeah. And so by the time they get to sophomore, you know, especially junior, senior year, they understand your scheme. Yeah. So our, our area is a little different, too. You know, where our high school sits is actually in the city. Mm-hmm. And uh, long story short, we get – we get kids from three different middle schools yeah, and so do other schools, you know, Cleveland Walker Valley get kids from three different middle schools. So right. we all kind of share those kids. So it's not like every kid at our middle school is coming to us. Yeah. So, okay. um, we wait till our, not, their ninth grade year, obviously to, to start installing scheme and teaching what we do. Gotcha. Gotcha. Coach, I gotta ask is, is a Tennessee guy. I'm, I'm traveling from 
Canada, basically right on the border of Canada and Montana where I live now, back to Tennessee to watch Tennessee play on Saturday. Can you talk a little bit about uh, Boo Carter and what kind of what kind of player and athlete that the University of Tennessee is going to be getting? Oh, yeah, they're going to be happy. Uh, number one, he is – I mean, he's just got God-given ability that not a lot of kids have. Well, we've never had anybody, and we've had some really good players come through here, but we've never had anybody like him. Yeah. Um, he is very, very talented, but I think the thing I love about him the most, he's a great teammate. That's awesome. He, 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 he treats everybody the same. It doesn't matter who you are on the team. He cuts up with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got a great personality. And then on top of that, he's got an unbelievable work ethic. Like he wants to be, he don't want to be good. He wants to be great. Yeah. And, um, you know, so everything we've seen from him so far, I mean, it, we have no complaints, no negativities. Like, yeah. uh, right. he, he is fun to coach, but, yeah. uh, so Tennessee's getting a guy that I, I honestly, I, I would see him, I think he's a DB in college. And that's what they recruit him as, as yeah. a safety, but yeah. I could see him touching the ball on offense too. I mean, yeah. he's just that type of player. He, he can do some special things and he certainly helped our team. Does, as far as a little bit of coaching that I, I've gotten to do, and I'm, I'm done with that, I, I, I enjoyed it, but I got to coach a little bit of special teams in high school. When it, does, does he return punts? Does he return oh, kickoffs? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, if there's a chance for him to touch it, he's there. So he's got that prime time kind of Dion thing going on. Oh yes, definitely. You know, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know about the NFL level, right? But, um, but yeah, at our level, and and like I said, I think at the next level, he's he's going to play both sides of the ball. And, um, you know, I think it. Coach Hopple wants him to touch it some. So yeah. he, he's like I said, he's going to do some things that just God given ability, uh, the rest of us don't have. Kind of reminds me, and this is a heck of a compliment, like a Dell Carter. Now I'm in my forties, a Dell Carter an Eric Berry type, and, I mean, that's that's saying a lot of Sean Summers that played at Oak Ridge with, with that ability on that first step to get that quick first step. Yeah, he's he's explosive for sure, and he gets to full speed really quick. And, and the other thing about him, he can put his foot in the ground and change direction. He, he's, he's obviously not as tall as Dale Carter, but yeah. um, he's, he's compact, but, man, he's powerful. You know, he's right around 200 pounds. Yeah. Um, Four three forty. Uh, he's strong in the weight room, um, and then, like I said at, at the beginning, is he is a competitor, so he likes to compete. In college, you're looking. I probably messed up by doing this, but in college, you're looking at a a hang time. What three five four zero oh, at least sometimes. Have Have you found that he's getting opportunities? Is your punter in practice able to give him that kind of look where that ball basically hits an airplane up there? Oh yeah, yeah. Our okay. punter, um, he, he can he can find it pretty well. He's actually our quarterback, so he's a very good athlete too. Very but, nice. Um, yeah, he's got really good hang time. But you know, I, I don't know if too many people are going to punt to boo. They're going to they're going to directional punt and oh, try wow. to keep it away okay. from him. Gotcha, gotcha. And again, uh, last thing to say on that, and then we'll finish up with Maryville and get you get you out of here and back to uh, game week against the Rebels. But when that ball goes up in the air, it, it is such it is such an art. It is such a technique to be able to follow that ball and the spin of the ball and understand where it's going to land and understand your surroundings and everything. And apparently, he understands that. Yeah, well, he's just natural. You yeah, know? I mean, he yeah. and like in the secondary, he, he sees more than one thing. I mean, yeah. he doesn't have to just lock in on a receiver. A lot gotcha. of kids don't have that peripheral vision. He, gotcha. He's got that, and it's the same with returning a punt. He can, yeah. He can feel the pressure of how fast people are on him, you know, like if a gunner's running down free. Or, yeah. Um, like I said, that that's not something you coach. That's no, just, just the talent that's – God-given that ability. Exactly. And there's no other way to describe it. It, it is what it is. But, um, yeah, he's got great peripheral vision. Are y'all running right now? Um, are you running a multiple? You run a three four four two five four three. Uh, we base out of a three four, but we, okay. we get in all those. You know, with with who we play and the offenses we play, you've got to be very multiple. Um, so it depends on who we're playing the game gotcha. plan from week to week. We'll, we'll move in and out of it. 
try to be as versatile, but try to keep it as simplistic as we can. So we actually teach, you know, we just teach techniques. Yeah. And then we may change a front or alignment, but try to those techniques, that toolbox that we taught them, that position, yeah. try to keep them in that realm. If you get a, obviously he's he's a he's a corner. Is that correct? Uh, Bo's a safety. Yeah. Oh, he's a safety. Can he? If you needed him, can he come up on a on a on a wide receiver number one and lock him down on on coverage? There's no doubt. I okay. mean, Bo, that's, Bo can do it all. Wow, there's that's not, awesome. There's uh, there's he could play linebacker. I mean, he's <laughs> wow. Yeah, he's the real deal. So okay then. Well. All right. Well, that's. I think that that answered a lot of questions. Definitely, uh, definitely hearing it from from the coach there, Damon Floyd at Bradley Central. Uh, coach, before we let you go, have to ask what what does Maryville do, and, and and what are you trying to? I'm not trying to do a scouting report. In fact, when I do upload this, the game should be over with. But w- what does Maryville do, and what are you trying to? Uh, what are you trying to focus on? Yeah, well, I don't think there's going to be any secrets. So even if it, you know, they hear it before, I mean, they're going to try to run the ball and keep it out of our hands because we are pretty explosive on offense or yeah. have been the first two games. Yeah. Um, defensively, you know, they're pretty multiple. They'll give you a start with a three-man front, but they'll give you a four-man front. They'll bring a couple pressures. They're going to try to keep make you drive the ball, make you make a mistake before they do. And, okay. Um, you know, I, I think we'll get a lot of – Two tight end personnel sets that we've got to defend, and we've got to, we've got to find we can't stop them from running. We got to find a way to slow them down. Yeah, I think field position is going to be huge. You got to make them drive the length of field. If we give them short fields, we're in trouble. Yeah. Um. So, it's the typical answers that any coach is going to give you on a on a you know a big ball game, silly penalties, turnovers, and field position, and then we got to go out and execute when we get a chance. And if something bad happens, we can't let it you know rattle us too much. We got to hand, be able to handle some adversity. Do you ever? Do they like to do a multiple multiple things on offense? Are they yeah, they're RPO? Very they'll, they'll, okay. Yeah, that they'll, they'll have they'll they'll do some RPOs, but they're very multiple. They'll get in a lot of different formations. You know, sometimes they're ten personnel, eleven personnel, twelve personnel. Uh, they got a couple of heavy set packages. Um, they'll give you a little bit of empty. They they got two quarterbacks they play that run the ball really well. Okay. Um, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna make you. They're going to make you line up to a lot of different formations, and if you don't, then they're going to be able to attack those, you know, those gaps that they're creating, and just by alignment. Yeah. Well, sounds to me that you've had a lot of great teams, but I mean, this this could be this could be the shot that the Bears get that first win against Maryville. Well, we're going to give it all we got. You know, yeah. I can't say we've had great teams because we've never we've never beaten Maryville. So we've had some good teams, the great ones. Uh, have always been Maryville, but yeah. you know we got we got to kick it off Friday and and see what happens. And is that going to be is that at home or is that at Maryville? Yeah, fortunately we get to play them in Bear Stadium. Oh, nice, 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 nice. I came down there with Cumberland County back in the day, back in the mid nineties, and you've got that long stairwell that walks down. I think that that's those are the kind of things that are add to tradition to high school. Yeah, our kids take a lot of pride in that. We call it the bear walk. And, yeah. You know, there's a little hot video right before when we're standing at the top, and then we yeah. come down to, you know, a certain song, and uh, our student section enjoys it. But, you know, I think kids, speaking of youth league like we did before, they grow up wanting to walk down the bear walk on a Friday night. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Coach, I will catch back up with you. Thanks so much for your time. If you don't mind, hold on one second. I'm going to sign off, and thank you for joining the show today, and good luck. Not just Friday, but the rest of this season. All right. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Coach Damon Floyd, Bradley County Central Bears, not the Golden Bears, but the Bears. Uh, tough task on Friday against Maryville, but uh, I think I think Coach Floyd's got his got his boys ready to go. And, and as they say, that's why they play the game, and we'll see what happens. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. I'm going to be interviewing – uh, excuse me, tomorrow, Gary Dolphin, the Iowa Hawkeyes, voice of the Iowa Hawkeyes. So blessed to be able to do this. Talked to Sean Witten yesterday with Elizabeth and and just had a great conversation about catching the ball and things like that. Catching the ball from Mike Vick, of all things, and breaking his finger. And talking about his brother going into the Hall of Fame, Jason Witten. Hopefully, we'll get Jason Witten on the show as well. Also got John Tyker from UTEP coming on. 
uh, this week, trying to work it out with him right now. And then Tommy Bunch Jr. of Meigs County, new head football coach, got his first win on uh, last Friday, looking for number two this week. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Have a great day, and go USA.